Hey, praise the Lord, everyone. Jeremy here, carrying on with our lesson. Last lesson was Abraham's faith. If you didn't see that video, please check it out. We left off at Genesis 22. I want to Abraham being blessed. I want to move on to chapter 23 and kind of fill you in on a couple gaps before we go on to our story about the twin brothers. Chapter 23 tells us about the burial of Sarah. And Abraham stood up from before his dead and spake unto the sons of Heth, saying, I am a stranger and a sojourn with you. This is Abraham. He's, he's traveled. He's in a, a land that he's unfamiliar with. Amen. But God will lead you. Amen. And that's what he was doing with Abraham. And Abraham and said, I am a stranger and a sojourner with you. Give me a possession of a burying place. He needed land. He needed a place to bury Sarah. So he went to these people, even though they didn't see eye to eye on a lot of things. Even though they, they disagreed. He said, give me a burying place with you, that I may bury my dead out of my sight. Verse 7 in chapter 23 of Genesis says, And Abraham stood up and bowed himself to the people of the land. Why? Because they gave him that place. Even though they didn't see eye to eye, they knew that that was important that he buried his wife. But he, and, and bowed himself to the people of the land, even to the children of Heath. Why did he do that? Respect. They showed each other respect. They gave him the land. He bowed to them to say thank you. As they continued on, Abraham buried his wife. In chapter 24, and Abraham was old, verse 1, Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. You know, we haven't heard a lot of good stories about Abraham other than him moving forward, right? I mean, he's been moved around and, and different things. He's, you know, uh, put Isaac on the, on the, on the, you know, that was going to sacrifice him, you know. So he didn't have a perfect life, don't think that. But he was blessed in all things. As we continue on, in chapter 24, we have the servant's prayer, where Abraham prays. Excuse me, the servant prays. And this is where they go in to, to start finding, uh, talking about finding a son for Isaac and, and everything. And I want to go to verse 15. And it came to pass, before he had done speaking that, behold, Rebekah came out. So this is, they're, they're trying to find a son for Isaac out of these, out of these group of people, of, of Abraham's people. Because he didn't want it to come from another area. Because Isaac was so important to the path, to the will of God. In verse 16, and the damsel was very fair to look upon, a virgin. She was very good looking. But it doesn't mean just that. It means that she was a good person. She was a good soul. She was a virgin. She was, she was following the will of God. N neither had any man known her. Verse 17, and the servant ran to meet her. He, it was so important to follow the will of God. Verse 18, and she said, drink, my Lord. This is They were, they were trying to get water as they traveled. And she gave them water, even though she, you know this wasn't the way things worked. In verse 21, And the man wondering at her held his peace, to wit whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. They didn't know whether Rebecca would come with them. You know, imagine somebody walking up to you and say, This is the guy you're supposed to marry. Come with me, please. I'm a servant of the Lord. How many of us would listen to that? Not many. But they said, and the man wondering at her held his peace to with whether the Lord had made his journey prosper or not. There is a time to be still, guys, when it comes to the word of God. I want to drop down in Genesis 24 to verse 26. And the man bowed down his head again. Here we go. The man bowed down his head and worshiped the Lord. Because he had found Rebekah. 
Verse 31 in Genesis 24, And he said, Come in, thou blessed of the Lord, wherefore standest thou without it? For I have prepared the house and room for the camels. They even watered the camels. Verse 33, And there was set meat before him to eat. But he said, I will not eat until I have told my errand. And he said, Speak on. This guy was fasting. Did you catch that in the scripture? Even in Genesis 24, he was fasting. He wasn't going to eat until he had gotten the message of what the will of God was, what he was there for. Do you put God first when you go somewhere, or do you put him last? You'll talk about him right before you leave. God's presence should be felt in every moment. Fasting, but he was fasting. And he wanted to complete the will of God before he ate. Continuing on verses 24, I want to read 49. 50 and 51. And now if you will deal kindly and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me that I may turn to the right hand or to the left. Are you honest? Or are you dishonest? Do we need to go left in this situation or do we need to go right in this situation? We're talking about the will of God. Or to the left. Left, right. Choices. This is about choices. You have a choice. Then Laban and Bithel answered and said, The thing proceeded from the Lord. We cannot speak unto thee bad or good. They didn't know. Behold, verse 51 of 24 in Genesis, Behold, Rebekah is before thee. Take her and go. And let her be thy master's son's wife, as the Lord hath spoken. They didn't know whether this was good or bad. But they knew it was from the Lord. And they said, Take Rebekah and go. And what happened next? They worshipped the Lord, bowing himself to the earth. Again, respect. Respecting the will of God. How did he worship? He bowed himself to the earth. The servant of the Lord did. Dropping down to verse 60, And they blessed Rebekah and said unto her, Thou art our sister. Already, just by making the choice to walk with them, she was their sister. <laughs> In Jesus' name, be thou the mother of thousands of millions, and let thy seed possess the gate of those which hate them. Going over to verse 65, part of it I want to read is at the, near the end. And the servant had said, it is my master, therefore she took a veil and covered herself. Verse 67, And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent, and took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. And Isaac was comforter after his mother's death. I want to point something out because I like to bring these things out in my, in my messages. If you notice in the scripture, it doesn't say they went and found a, a judge to marry him. It doesn't say they went and had to go to the courthouse to get a marriage license. It says they went in the tent. And they became to know each other. That's when the love began. That is when their marriage began. Took Rebecca is marriage. They were married in the eyes of God. In Jesus' name. Chapter 25 is where I want to start tonight with our story of the twin brothers. The, the first part of that chapter talks about Abraham meeting another wife. Her name was Keturah, and it talks about their children. They actually are the 12 princes according to their nations. And that's a whole other story when you dig deeper into your Bible. But I want to read to you tonight verse Genesis 25, starting at 27. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison. But, Be but Rebekah loved Jacob. Mm. The same woman they went and just got, we just talked about for these first few minutes. They went and got because the servant of the Lord says she belongs to Isaac. But Rebekah loved Jacob. Isaac loved Esau. And Jacob sawed pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me. I pray thee with that same red pottage, for I am faint. 
Therefore was his name called Edom. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. Esau was hungry. He was starving. And his own brother said, I'll feed you. But give me what is yours. Who? And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die. His own brother at the point to die. And he says, Give me your food or give me your rights. And what profit shall this birthright do to me if I am dead? That's how Jacob looked at it. And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he swore unto him and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. This is why the Bible says don't ever swear to the Lord. Don't make promises, especially if you can't keep them. Verse 33, And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he swore unto him, and, Jake, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Verse 34, continuing on, Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink, and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Hallelujah, Jesus. In verses 26, it talks about a famine. And Isaac went unto Ambulik, the king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him, and he said, Go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee. And will bless thee, for unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. Don't get discouraged if you're moved from one place to another. Maybe it's a job, maybe it's a home, maybe it's a town, maybe it's a church, maybe it's a pastor. Don't be discouraged where you're moved. Abraham never gave up. Abraham continued to fight for the will of God, even with all the dissension. Imagine being the dad of those two. Knowing that one just stole the birthright, everything the servant had worked for to get Rebecca to, to Isaac, or to, yeah, to Isaac, and she loves Jacob. Man, imagine the family turmoil. How many of us have been through this in our lives? Verse 5 says, Why Abraham received these things? Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge and my commandments, my statutes and my laws. Abraham may have had all this chaos and confusion around him, but make no mistake about it, it was around him. Abraham wasn't choosing to live a life of evil. He was choosing to live a life for God. We see in Genesis chapter 26 as Isaac prospers. <laughs> but I want to go to verse chapter 27. I've mean, got quite a bit here I want to read to you. It's 1 through 40. <coughs> Almost the whole chapter. And it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called Esau his eldest son and said unto him, My son, and he said unto him, Behold, here I am. This We're going to move into continuing on with Isaac's request and how Jacob deceived Isaac. Pause. All right, as we continue on, I'm going to start with chapter Genesis 27. Here we are. And it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called Esau his eldest son and said unto him, My son. And he said unto him, Behold, here I am. And he said, Behold, now I am old, I am now, know not the day of my death. Now therefore take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver, and thy bow, and go out to the field, and take me some venison, and make me savory meat, such as I love, and bring it to me, that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die. And Rebekah heard when Isaac spoke to Esau his son, and Esau went to the field to hunt for venison, and to bring it. So we know Esau was a good hunter, must have been able to kill good, kill the animals good with his bow. And Rebekah, that's very important here in a minute. 
Verse 6, Genesis 27, And Rebekah spake unto Jacob her son, saying, Behold, I heard thy father speak unto Esau thy brother, saying, Bring me venison, and make me savory meat, that I may eat and bless thee before the Lord before my death. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice according to that which I command thee. This was very important. Isaac was moving towards death. He wanted to bless the next, I guess you could say, rock in that situation. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice according to that which I command thee. Genesis 27, 9. Go now to the flock and fetch me from thence two good kids of the goats, and I will make them savory meat for thy father such as he loveth. And thou shalt bring it to thy father that he may eat, and that he may bless thee before his death. And Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, his own mother, Isaac's wife, Behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. My father, peradventure, will fill me, and I shall seem to him as a deceiver. And I shall bring a curse upon me, and not a blessing. And his mother said unto him, Upon me be thy curse, my son. Only obey my voice, and go fetch me them. And he went and fetched, and brought them to his mother, and his mother made savory meat, such as his father loved. And Rebekah took goodly raiment of her eldest son Esau, which were with her in the house, and put them upon Jacob, her younger son. So let me paint you a picture here. Rebekah the mother is pushing for, e for Esau to take what is Jacob's, because she loves Esau and she doesn't love Jacob. But she gave him Jacob's clothes. She gave Esau Jacob's clothes so he could fool her own man, her own husband their own father. And she put the skins of the kids of the goats upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck. So now we have... What? And his mother said unto him, Upon me be thy curse, my son, and only obey my voice, and go fetch me them. And he went and fetched and brought them to his mother, and his mother made savory meat such as his father loved. Sorry, I'm kind of double reading here. Verse 15 of Genesis 27. And Rebekah took goodly raiment of her eldest son Esau, which were with her in the house, and put them upon Jacob, her younger son. And she put the skins of the kids of the goats upon his hands, making his hands hairy, guys. Verse 17. And she gave the savory meat and the bread which she had prepared into the hand of her son Jacob. And he came unto his father, so Jacob goes unto Abraham, and he said, Father, my father, he said, Here I am I, who art thou, my son? And Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau, thy firstborn. Here Jacob lies. I have done according as thou badest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat of my venison, that they so may bless me. And Isaac said unto his son, as remember, Isaac's old in age, he probably can't see very good. You know, he's using film more than he's using sight at this point. And Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. Well, that's convincible, especially to Abraham. We, he knows how God works. Verse 21, And Isaac said unto Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may fill thee, my son, whether thou be my very son Esau or not. So Abraham knew he had a filling. Sometimes you got to go with that filling. Don't let people tell you fillings are the devil. If Abraham had went with that filling, maybe the thing would have changed. But Jacob, in this moment, was deceiving his father. Come near, I pray thee, or excuse me, verse 22, And Jacob went near unto Isaac his father, and he felt him, and said, the, Fill in that animal skin, and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned or not, he couldn't figure it out, because the voice told one thing, but the hands told another. And he discerned him not, because his hands were hairy as his brother's Esau's hands, so he blessed him. 
And he said, Art thou my very son, Esau? And he said, I am. Again, lying to his father and to God. Verse 25, And he said, Bring it near to me, and I will eat of my son's venison, that, thou, that my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near to him, and he did eat. And he brought him wine, and he drank. And his father Isaac said unto him, Come near now, and kiss me, my son. Kiss is very important in the Bible. It even talks about, you know, kiss your brothers and your sisters upon greeting them. That was the greeting. It wasn't a handshake. It was a kiss. Amen. We're supposed to love one another. And he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his raiment. He could smell the smell of his clothes and blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the Lord hath blessed. He was kissing and smelling Esau. He was kissing and smelling Esau, the one the Lord hath blessed. But Abraham changed that when he blessed Jacob in this deceiving moment. Genesis 27, 28, Therefore God give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Here he is blessing Esau. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over my, thy brethren and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Cursed be every one that curseth thee and blessed be he that blesseth thee. Verse 30, And it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob, and Jacob was yet scarce gone out from the presence of Isaac his father, that Esau his brother came in from hunting. So now we've had a changing of the guard. We've had, we've had Abraham bless Esau, thinking it was Jacob. Now Esau is there with Abraham. <laughs> What's he probably want? He probably wants that blessing. Verse 31, and he, and he also had made savory meat and brought it unto his father and said unto his father, Let my father arise and eat of his son's venison, that thy soul may bless him. Bless me. And Isaac, his father, said unto him, Who art thou? And he said, I am thy son, thy firstborn, Esau. And Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, Who? Where is he that hath taken venison and brought it to me? And I have eaten all of all before thou camest. And I have blessed him. Yeah, and he shall be blessed. Abraham gave the blessing to Jacob the deceiver. Hmm? What I say? Oh yeah, Isaac gave Isaac gave the blessing of to Esau. And when Esau heard the words of his verse 34, and when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry, and said unto his father, Bless me, even me also, O my father. Esau didn't want to give up what he was what he knew was coming. He didn't want to give up his blessing. He said, Bless me too, Father. Bless me too. And he said, Thy brother came with subtlety and hath taken away your blessing, Jacob. Or Esau. And he said, Is he not, is he not rightly named Jacob, which means the deceiver? For he hath supplanted me these two times. He hath took away my birthright. And behold, now he hath taken away my blessing. And he said, Hast thou not reserved a blessing for me? And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold. And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy Lord, and all his brethren have I given to him for servants. And with corn and wine have I sustained him. And what shall I do now unto thee, my son? Keep listening. So, so, to me, verse 37, I'm going to tell you what it sounds like to me. Sounds like Isaac said, hey, you want the blessing of the Lord? Here's some corn and wine. That should keep you busy. But he said, what shall I do now unto thee, my son? And, and Esau said unto his father, hast thou but one blessing? My father? And Esau knew. He said, You're, this is God. You're a man of God. And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing? My father, bless me. Even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. 
and of the dew of heaven from above. I don't know about you, and I don't know about anyone else, but be careful what side you choose. Because reading these stories, I think I'd rather have the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven before I just had some corn and wine. It's all in what you want. Even me also, O my father, and Esau lifted up his voice and wept, and Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. Continue on with my last verse, verse 40. And by thy sword, at least for this part, and by thy sword shalt thou live and shall serve thy brother. He's blessing him. He's telling him he has the fatness of the earth, that Esau can have the dew from heaven above, but his job will be with a sword and to protect the brother that just stole his birthright. Sir, thy brother shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. This is the story of Jacob deceiving Isaac. Of Jacob deceiving Esau. Rebecca, let's throw her in there too. She's part of this. She deceived them all too. She was the mastermind behind it. Who's the mastermind behind your walk? Is it God? Or is it people in the world? Is it people around you? Who is leading you? The, the chapters in Genesis go on. I don't want to get into them too much because we're going to continue on with them next time. For Jacob has a dream is what we're going to move into. Maybe this will change everything. Maybe this will be the next path for God's will. Maybe this will fix the relationship between Esau, Isaac, and Jacob. There had to be damage, even though Abraham is probably a very forgiving man. But he knew what he was doing. He knew there was more to this, that there was a will of God behind this. Esau hated Jacob so much for what he had done. We don't want to grow hate in our heart. That's what we'll pick up next time in Jacob's dream. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this message tonight. Let someone get out of it what they need for the next chapter in the Bible, for the next story or for the next step in their life. God, we ask you to, to bless in the beginning, church services that are starting this Sunday. If you're in or around Taylorville, Illinois, or ever want to come check them out, for Cherrywood Trail, next to Tasty Treat in Taylorville, Illinois, we will be having in the beginning church services. Praise, worship testimonies, like my own, held of 19 diagnoses, and it's been over two years. Excuse me, it's been over three years. Since I've, since I've had to deal with any of that or any of those 19 medical issues, including colon cancer, COPD, emphysema, the list goes on and on. God, we just thank you for everything that you do in our life, and we thank you for the stories. Help us to find meaning in them for our life and our walk. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless each and every one of you.